Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will call the July 14th meeting of the Common Council. I will ask our clerk to call the roll to determine a quorum. Elder Person Keene. Here. Lysak. Here. Reinke. Here. Rote. Here. Stefanski. Here. Vitali. Here. Weigel. Here. Grisham. Here. Haas. Here. Nine present. Uh, Elder Person Tenorio is excused. Uh, please rise if you are able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led this evening by Elder Person Keene. Okay, moving on to item D in the agenda this evening, we have two public hearings. I will ask our clerk to read public hearing number one. Ordinance to amend the official West Dallas zoning map amending section 12.05. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, our first hearing is a rezoning to uh, basically seek conformance with our comprehensive plan rezoning approximately uh, eight properties within the northern gateway of Highway 100. The area includes um, uh, lands from the North City limits, the top of your screen here, to Washington Street on the east side of Highway 100, which runs in a north-south uh, direction here, east to the Union Pacific Railway um, on this side. So, and then the list of properties include um, a variety of uh, light industrial uses, um, some, some commercial playtime doggy daycare, the north here, the first property on the top, going down, moving downward south, rider truck, northern tool, gray bar uh, warehouse and office, small parking lot, which is used by, um, it's actually owned by gray bar, but uh, was formerly used by the hobo property. The, the hobo property, which is a former retailer, um, and then U-Haul uh, and the Mayfair Village uh, uh, mobile home community at the very south. So those are the eight properties that are subject and affected within this rezoning area. They're all currently zoned manufacturing, M1 manufacturing district. This is just another aerial view of the same thing we were just looking at. Um, roughly about 30 acres in total. And on the left, left-hand side of your screen in purple there, that's uh, uh, all the manufacturing zone lands, all of which uh, within this uh, area are zone manufacturing, which provides, uh, I guess, a variety of um, light industrial to ranging to uh, heavier industrial uses, things like self-storage, uh, vehicle leasing, commercial vehicle leasing, outdoor storage, warehousing. Those are the types of things that commonly happen within a manufacturing M1 zit district. On the right-hand side is our future land use map from our 2030 comprehensive plan. If you see that's a, a different color, that's red. Red uh, meaning commercial. That's how we envision this, this corridor. When the comprehensive plan was, was developed back in 2011, um, many, many different areas of the city, we had a different vision for you know areas like Six Points and uh, uh, the uh, uh, what is now uh, 68th and Mitchell and Highway 100, no different. It's an area that uh, we, we foresaw, at least in this northern gateway, is converting to more of a commercial reuse. More recently, in uh, earlier this year, the completion of the Highway 100 corridor study was, uh, uh, was presented to the Common Council. And this is just a view looking north from the the Hobo property, north um, to the north city limits, Wauwatosa in the distance here, this being Highway 100. So that's the existing vision. The Highway 100 plan contemplated, you know, a variety of and a diverse mix of different uses for the Highway 100 corridor in total. Um, and then notably focused in on the, on the northern gateway area uh, on the north, basically within this rezoning area we're talking about here on the north end of Highway 100. This area, if you've ever come into the city from, from the south or uh, when leaving the city headed north, you know, you notice uh, the, the, some of some buildings which happen to be vacant, the Hobo property, U-Haul, uh, playtime doggy daycare, outdoor truck storage, and so on. The city is looking at um, 
enhancing this area as well as other areas within the Highway 100 corridor for more vibrant uses, a higher and better use. And that's part of the reason why you know, we're looking at a rezoning of this area is that currently as, cur as currently zone manufacturing, it's fairly you know, somewhat limiting in, what, um, the, in terms of the diversity of types of uses. Manufacturing doesn't necessarily allow residential or multifamily development. Um, so we're looking at creating um, a district that would support a little bit more dynamic end users, uh, mixed uses, breweries, food incubators, restaurants, destinations. The area Highway 100 corridor does lack somewhat of a, um, a connection, even though it does run three and a half miles through our city. It's been um, tagged as, as an area that's been haphazardly developed over you know decades of time. So we're trying to change a little bit of that um, through this, this rezoning, as well as future uh, changes along other parts of the corridor. But we see it as be becoming a more walkable destination, uh, a more walkable cor uh, corridor. It does have great connection to the Hank Aaron State Trail. And then there's also opportunities for uh, not only a variety of different uses, mixed uses, but also we see perhaps some uh, higher density uh, residential, medical office buildings, and other commercial development. This is one such concept from our Highway 100 study, which shows um, the reuse of the Hobo building for a food incubator, retail use, and brewery, carving off a portion of the north end of the building for a small park space, which would make a connection to the neighborhood. All of the parking would be behind the building, and then you could have additional office, medical office, and maybe even some very light uh, flex industrial to the north. So the path to date towards rezoning to commercial has included um, you know, our Highway 100 corridor study. There was a moratorium that was put in place in mid-April on April 22nd. That moratorium um, extended for another 60 days, renewed basically on June 16th. And um, that moratorium is in place until uh, August 18th. Um, our planning commission meeting met on the 24th and they uh, recommended advancement of the rezoning. They, they, they uh, recommended council uh, pass or adopt the uh, rezoning to, to where we are tonight. And on the right, this is just a copy of the notice, part of the notice that went out to um, you know, the eight affected property owners. So Planning Commission and staff are recommending that the area be rezoned to C3 Commercial, which would um, align and in conform with the 2030 uh, land use plan. It also enhanced and set the stage for many of the um, opportunities as evidenced within the Highway 100 study. Uh, to date, there's been one objection that's been received. received. Um, there may be some people here tonight to, uh, to speak um, on behalf of their properties. Um, while council could certainly make a decision this evening, um, you're not required to. Uh, you have time to make a decision. Um, again, the moratorium does expire August 18th, but um, you could, I guess you do have another, uh, after this council meeting, there's one more council meeting that you could use to, uh, to think about it. Um, so just, just putting that out there. Uh, one of the um, property owners is U-Haul, and they, they had shared this at the planning commission meeting. While it's not necessarily a topic of rezoning, it is what they would like to do. And it is uh, a potential issue if, um, if, if rezoned to commercial, um, the city, you know, they would not be allowed to build um, a uh, self-storage and um, facility on the Hobo property, which they've purchased. These are just some different views. And I believe a representative is here this evening to speak on, on their behalf. That's all I have for this first hearing. I'm happy to entertain any questions. Council. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the presentation. Are there any questions from the members of the Common Council? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Vitale. Yeah, Steve, I have a question regarding the old uh, same club. Uh, there was any change from uh, the zoning from previously then now? I mean, there's going to be a more light industrial, that site? The old same club. Yeah, the old, the old Sam's Club property was in 2016, the city 
uh, had an initiative to rezone properties further south, uh, south of Greenfield Avenue, including the Sam's Club property um, and some other properties that were zone manufacturing. That was rezoned to commercial C3. And um, so currently the Sam's Club property is zone C3 uh, community commercial. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mayor Devine. Alderman, Alderperson Grisham. Uh, Steve, I just have a question. As far as the notices that went out that impacted the eight businesses, they are aware that they're grandfathered into this, correct? They're, that, they're not going to have to move. Um, there was a, a lot of calls that came through specifically for doggy daycare, and I think we visited that at our last council meeting, but I just wanted to clarify, sure. clarification yeah. on that. You're correct, Alderman Grisham. The businesses that are, that are there today uh, may continue to do business as they, as they have. Uh, they, you know, business property owners could sell those properties and someone else, you know, uh, could come along and, and continue to use them as they have been. So they can even, you can even sell the property to someone else and if they use it in the same manner, that's acceptable. Uh, the problem would become if um, there was a lapse in occupancy of 12 months or greater, that's when the city would expect um, the to, to comply with the, uh, the zoning district. Okay, thank you. If, if rezoned, yeah. Any other questions from the members of the council? Seeing none, are there any questions on this item from the members of the audience? Please come up to the podium. Please give us your name and address for our official record and sign in either before or after your comments. Thanks. Absolutely. Alex Sunlightner, uh, U-Haul Company, 505 East Capitol Drive, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Forgive me if you can't hear me, I'm new to this too, so. Um, I'm actually here more, more or less just to ask for some help, ask for a chance. Uh, we purchased the property in March, March 17th. We found out April 22nd that a moratorium was put in place. Um, we have attempted to make contact with a number of different people to try and set up meetings. Thankfully enough, we were just last month able to meet with the planning and zoning department to express our concerns. Of course, we purchased the Hobo property um, for $3.7 million with the expectation that it matched the zoning that was on the board. We have yet to have a chance to even sit down and work on what could be the property. The image you saw earlier was a glimpse of what we could do uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any feedback on, on that imaging to even make some amends or, or change to, to bring to council here. Um, as of last month, our, our last meeting, we again tried to sit down. Of course, coronavirus and, and everything that has gone with it has slowed things down. So we haven't had a chance to actually work out any plans. So I am now stuck with a $3.7 million building after six months of phone calls to the zoning and planning department to verify our use would be permitted. Each time we were told absolutely, wouldn't be a problem, wouldn't be a problem. I understand that February this study took place. However, typically when these take place, it starts much earlier than that. My call started in August when we uh, became interested in the property through December up to March before we purchased the property with no understanding that this was, this was taking place. So we bought this property in good faith again for $3.7 million to turn it into a self storage facility. On my call this morning with the zoning and planning department after uh, about a two week delay and an email to the mayor, I appreciate you helping me out there. I got a phone call today and my recommendation was to find a conforming use for the property or sell it. Now, I, I can't just create a business within U-Haul. Um, you know, we've been in business for 75 years. We kind of have our angle on what we do. So I can't just create something out of thin air to, to use a 101,000 square foot building. I don't need office space. I have two of them in, in the Milwaukee area already. And I'm not interested in selling the property in the middle of a pandemic. So I am looking, even if you don't vote tonight, to at least give us time to work together. I have a huge investment in this property. I plan on investing three to $4 million more into this property uh, to create something that is a gateway. I look at those images, of course, I'm a little bit biased, but um, that's what I'd wanna see rolling into a city. Now, in order to move into a city, you need a couple of things. You need a U-Haul truck, 
you need a place to put your stuff, and you need our services to sell you boxes and moving supplies. We're overwhelmed at our current location, of course, next door. And again, I appreciate this new zoning plan. However, I own two of the properties and have no plans to sell. Gray Bar's been in business for a number of years as well. So although this is a future program, it seems to be a little too far into the future to start making decisions today. So I'm just asking for some time, or at the end of the day, I would love your vote to say no and not accept this new zoning ordinance. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. We're really just, at this point, are li more listening, unless anyone has questions. No, okay. Fair enough, thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else wish to address the council under public hearing number one? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I'm attorney Brian Randall of Davis and Keelthal 111 East Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, here on behalf of Mayfair Village Mobile Court, Mobile Home Court, LLC, the property owner of the Mobile Home Park, 1000 South 108th Street. It's good to be back here at City Hall. It's been about a year since I've been here uh, before this body, but uh, times have changed and yet uh, some faces look familiar even through plexiglass. <laughs> Um, I'm here because, and I should introduce Kay Steiza is right behind me, I'm kind of blocking her apologies, but Kay is one of the family owners of the Mayfair Village Mobile Home Court, and it has been in existence for many, many decades and in that family ownership for many decades. Uh, as the longtime property owners and stakeholders, we're in a position of having some questions, a few concerns, and, and certainly recognizing, as the last speaker mentioned, we're in the midst of a pandemic, I know the plan commission had a meeting last month. I, I know the city has been working on this study for quite some time, but it seems to be moving relatively rapidly and it's a tough situation to just make sure we're having all the right conversations and, and questions answered. That said, I do appreciate, I, I did catch Steve uh, at his desk today and so I appreciate staff uh, being able to answer a number of my questions uh, right out of the blue and uh, on short notice. but. Uh, Still a couple others and I'll, I'll cover those in a moment. Uh, I mentioned that the pandemic is somewhat extraordinary and, and these are tough times to do business. I can see the city is, is doing a good job and, and certainly the internet helps to find information online and, and all your plans and studies are there. But it's also somewhat extraordinary with respect to a property rights issue when the eight parcels you're looking to rezone tonight, none of the property owners initiated that rezoning. None of the property owners asked for that to occur. And so what's gonna happen is if you vote and if you do this, you'll create legal non-conforming uses for seven of the eight. If, and I think Steve mentioned this in his staff report, but it definitely is in your written staff report. Seven of the eight will suddenly become legal non-conforming uses. And, and that's okay because as, as Steve did highlight, that doesn't mean the businesses have to close and they're being pushed out. But it does create some concern. And, and you heard the last speaker from our perspective, my clients, we're in an equally awkward spot because we're legally non-conforming in the manufacturing zoning as it is. So it's almost like we're without a zoning home in this situation and, and maybe we should be asking to be zoned high density residential because that's really what we are if you look at a number of your studies and, and your plans. We have a number of residential units and the five or seven acres that, that Steve showed on the plan as a high density. Instead of a high rise apartment building, we have a number of units very closely spaced. But that gives rise to our issues. We're manufactured zone today. We're at the south end of, of this corridor study. We're not really the gateway feature. We're, we're not opportunity site number one. We're kind of just at the end and, and we are a different use than what's envisioned and what's there now. And, and I submit to you that though that is still a good opportunity to have and still a good thing to have uh, in the city. I did take a chance, I've reviewed the public hearing notice, I, I was able to print it all out. You guys have a, a good amount of information in that notice, the legislative records, the Highway 100 corridor study, the 2030 comprehensive plan, and that land use plan. In the 2030 comprehensive plan, so your zoning, your city attorney will tell you this, you have a very good city attorney, that any rezoning decisions will have to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. And, and the city's been working at this since the 2010 comp plan, then 2030. But I wanna point out a couple of things that are important just to keep in mind. And, and this cover sheet in that comp plan, it makes reference of among the important things for the city's vision, housing, 
City is to maintain a variety of housing types at a range of densities, styles, and costs to accommodate the needs and desires of existing and future residents. And in redevelopment and land use, those bullet points. Redevelopment, identify and transform underutilized properties throughout the city. And land use, encourage the continuation and future development of compatible land uses within our urban community. Continuation being the point of emphasis there. We're not a vacant storefront. I understand that's a concern and that's an issue and why staff is trying to do some long range planning. But we're not a vacant site to be redeveloped. We're looking to have you continue the land use that we have and with housing to provide a very important portion of housing here in the city for a certain price point and a certain lifestyle that people are looking for. And I understand there's a continuum of different housing styles within a manufactured home community, but the styzes take great pride in the maintenance and the upkeep and, and what they provide for their residents and the types of residents they have who are your constituents and, and residents here of the city. With respect to the Rose Hill neighborhood, that's where we are. So I'm now pointing to page 3-8 of the 2030 plan. It gives two recommendations. The first is ensure that the proper standards for mobile home maintenance are being enforced in the area. And again, the Stizes stand behind. They believe they have a very nice community for their residents and they are following that recommendation and that's in your own plan. But then seemingly contradictory that, a couple bullet points later, encourage the redevelopment of the mobile home park. So you know, right there, black and white, here we are, maybe we're not acceptable, maybe we're not desired, but yet ensure that proper maintenance. We think that you can maybe have it both ways. I know there are other mobile home parks in the area. Maybe there are some that are ready to be redeveloped. But in this instance, as long as we adhere to that first bullet point that you're able to ensure and that we live up to the maintenance standards, that there isn't any reason to really push us out and to not have a part of that community embraced for what it is. Finally, in that comp plan, there's a map, uh, page 3-24, it's interesting that at the time of doing this 2030 comp plan, the Grafe engineering firm, they actually did not include the Mayfair Village uh, mobile home court park site in the Northern Gateway Corridor. As I mentioned, we're kind of at the Southern end of what we're talking about now, where that one parcel they tacked on. I can see on a map why it makes sense, but even in the original visioning study, we're not really in the corridors and the gateway areas that have been previously discussed. With respect to the Highway 100 corridor study, which is a relatively newer document, I know as Steve mentioned that was back in February, uh, I've had the chance to look at that. A couple of interesting things, and, and this goes to the types of housing we provide. On, on page 31, there's this graphic that shows what the existing user groups are in the city. Gen X, Urban, Metro Fusion, these are a couple of terms that are kind of new to me, or at least they're slamming things together. Uh, middle ground, but then under senior styles, the Highway 100 corridor plan acknowledges that these older individuals or couples area, excuse me, these older individuals or couples are adapting to life as empty nesters and preparing for fixed income lifestyles. Many live in senior living complexes or mobile homes. And then the salt of the earth category, the vast majority of households in this segment are not college educated and live in attached unit or mobile homes which they own. Point being, the corridor study did a good job identifying who comprises West Dallas, and there are some very important constituencies, fixed incomes and people who may choose to live in a community like what we offer. And it's not to say that there isn't a home for those. And so our concern is as we look at commercial zoning for that particular site, that it sends the wrong signal and it creates challenges for us as we continue to maintain and keep up in consistency with your comp plan. So, we recognize the goal of the rezoning. We understand and appreciate the legal non-conforming use explanations. Uh, certainly as a lawyer, and I've pretty recently just become involved, so I'm still working through your zoning code and, and how those definitions may apply. Having the opportunity to have a frank conversation with Steve was very good. We want to maintain the community. We want to make sure a unit that may not be in the best shape we can swap out and that our lots as they are viewed as individual units aren't the whole parcel, which I think is how the city attorney would interpret the legal non-conforming use as it relates to our property. But those are all a lot of questions that I think merit discussion. And so we would ask that as we work through those questions with staff, that there may not be a vote tonight and maybe further discussion, or perhaps some of you would have other feedback and discussion mm -hmm. on that so that we can allow, um, to continue to be allowed to have that important sense in place in the community. The final point that we are going to raise with staff 
is related to another parcel that we do own just on the southwest, and this land use map from, from your website shows a vacant parcel that we own that's not on that map, that's not uh, part of our current parcel, but we do own it, and we've been working with staff, uh, my clients have a number of attempts of trying to figure out how we can attach that or make sure it's zoned uniformly with uh, how we are using it now. That's not on your notice, so you can't take action, or you can't uh, do anything with it res with uh, formal respect, but I brought it up just because that's something that we do want to work through with your staff, and I didn't want you to be surprised about it in the future. Uh, but so with that said, we appreciate the hard work that staff has been doing. We recognize what the vision is to accomplish, but the vision is the very future. Today's reality is we have a wonderful community. We have a number of your constituents they are living and we're not looking to rezone it to manufacturing or even commercial but we'd like to keep working with staff on how to make sure that's the best for everyone involved thank you thank you does anybody else wish to address the council on public hearing number one or have questions about public hearing number one okay seeing none we will close our first public hearing and I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number two. Resolution relative to determination of application for a special use permit for 160 Driving Academy, a proposed business to be located at 900 block South 63rd Street. <coughs> Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Drivers Academy 160 is a um, educational use, which is considered a special use within the Manufacturing Zoning District. Uh, the specific use here is going to be located on the very east end of Washington Street, it's highlighted here in yellow. Just for context, 70th Street is on the far left-hand side of your slide here, Washington Street, which passes by the uh, Ellis Yards development, uh, Whitnell Summit, Bilaki Sign Company. It terminates here at uh, the east end, and then uh, that, that is where access uh, begins for uh, the roughly five acre chunk of land. Um, so the specific use um, will have 15 students at any given time. Uh, basically they're on site, they're gonna be conducting uh, the basic safety maneuvers uh, uh, to get their, ultimately get their CD, CDL license. There will also be some field instruction which will take place out on the open road. Um, and they expect about two trucks per day for that, uh, for the, um, two trucks going out, two trucks coming back at the uh, end of the day. Hours of operation are um, Monday to Friday, 8, um, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. As mentioned, the property is zone M1 manufacturing. It is considered a special use, the training element. Um, it's a five acre site. On site, they're gonna have, uh, you know, the, obviously the area, the paved area here for truck maneuvering. There will be a small platform uh, area and observation area built on the south end of the site. Uh, the overall property is um, currently bound by a chain link fence. They are proposing to construct an additional 100 foot fence here on the, along parallel with Mineral Street. Um, and then there's also um, some, some toilet facilities here that are planned um, near the student area. There is um, parking for 12 parking stalls uh, that are gonna be provided on site. Uh, you, you notice here that the zoning ordinance requires many more parking stalls, 45 parking stalls. Uh, but in this case, I mean, it is a, a wide open paved area. I don't think there's gonna be any problem for uh, a few additional cars should, uh, should there be uh, 15 students or um, maybe the transition between classes. Um, all ingress and egress is gonna be right here at this point. And uh, just based on that previous slide, it's all going back out. You know, from this point, it's going back out uh, to 70th Street. The uh, uh, green area here is existing um, growth. Uh, it's a wooded area along the south southeast side of the site. And uh, there is residential um, uh, to the uh, south southeast and east of 63rd and south of Mineral. Uh, motor castings uh, is over this way. Um, and then uh, the Whitnell Summit property is to the, uh, to the east. This is a view um, of that wooded area that Basically this picture was taken, or Google Street View was taken at this corner, intersection at 64th and Mitchell, looking here in that direction. So you're looking uh, northeast. And this is Mineral Street here. So 
So Planning Commission had recommended that, um, you know, they, they recommend conditional approval, um, some minor site, uh, site conditions. Um, otherwise, uh, there have been no objections to date. However, the, I did get a, um, a call from uh, an alder, alderman today uh, with a concern that the, they received from a constituent nearby, uh, basically more or less concerned about the uh, hours of operation and how, how and where trucks were going to enter and exit the site. Um, well, certainly, I, you know, there, there, there will be no um, exiting onto Mineral or to 64th or to 63rd. All of that traffic is going to go westbound out Washington Street to 70th Street and then likely north to I-94. So um, I have no further uh, presentation, but if there are any questions, uh, happy to entertain. Thank you. Are there yeah. any questions? <coughs> I'll turn on my microphone and uh, I'm assuming you all heard me ask for questions from the council. Still none. Is there anybody in the audience with questions on public hearing number two? Okay, seeing none, we will close our second public hearing. We will move on to item E, which is citizen participation. This is the chance to receive information from members of the public during this 30 minute period. Each speaker must announce to the council their name and address, sign in at the podium and limit their comments to no more than five minutes. Is there anybody that wishes to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Good evening, uh, Mayor Devine and Common Council members. Thank you for the opportunity to address you again. Uh, my name is Jim Curlin. I'm the president and CEO of Beyond Vision. Uh, Beyond Vision is a 501c3 social enterprise with the vision statement of enriching the lives of Americans who are blind through the dignity of work valued by customers and community. So we purchased the former Sam's Club from Walmart approximately a year ago last June. And um, I would just say that uh, to, to reintroduce you, Beyond Vision is all about jobs. Uh, jobs, 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 that's what we're about. We currently employ about 130 people uh, over half of them are visually impaired and blind. Uh, the other half, or a little less than half, are typically sighted. What we do is enable careers for people with vision loss by doing value-added work to, uh, for commercial companies such as Harley-Davidson, uh, Briggs & Stratton, GE, and many other commercial partners. <clears throat> we also provide call services for the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we do, for example, the unclaimed property call program for the state of Wisconsin, and we just picked up uh, the unemployment insurance call program for the state of Wisconsin small businesses. Um, in addition, we do um, a lot of work for the U.S. government. Uh, we make uh, we do value-added work to products such as privacy filters, uh, floor mats, specialty toolkits for the Department of Defense. Our plan is to double or triple the number of jobs, uh, and this facility will enable that. We're cramped for space in our current facility, and our plan is to increase jobs by uh, 100, 200, 300 uh, additional jobs in West Dallas over the next few years, and again, this facility will help enable that. These are also the kind of jobs that West Dallas needs. Uh, we're part of the solution and not part of the problem uh, speaking specifically to your traffic saturation problem on Highway 100, 95% uh, of our direct employees are, are visually impaired and so therefore use public transportation. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, these are the types of jobs that are not going to create additional traffic burden on Highway 100, which is, well, at least before COVID, was saturated. Um, so that's part of our attraction to this location is access to buses. It's absolutely critical to our mission and obviously uh, the major corridors of Highway 100 going north-south and uh, Greenfield going east-west is really important to enable our employees to get to work and go home. Um, you have a growing number of dark stores in West Dallas. Everybody realizes that and COVID only made that worse and exasperated the problem. Our vision is to repurpose this property and make it a vital part of the community. Uh, Alderman Vitali was nice enough to hand out a, a brochure for you uh, of our visibility center. Um, and you know, I, I, some of you have seen it from last year, the existing Alderman, this will reintroduce you to our plan. 
Uh, there's, as I understand, three new alder persons. Uh, so this will formally introduce you to our vision. So what is our vision? Uh, our plan is to create what we're going to call the visibility center. Uh, essentially, it's a one-stop shop for people with vision loss uh, to be able to pursue their dreams, uh, to be all they can be, regardless of their lack of visual acuity. Um, you can see in the brochure we intend to build offices under the existing roof line. Uh, we're not going to add to the building. Uh, we also plan to convert as much as possible of the parking lot into green space, uh, which will include a, a walking park that will enable or, or be available to our employees as, west, uh, as well as to the West Dallas community. Uh, our zoning request change from C3 to M1 is being considered by the Planning Commission, uh, commission uh, next week, Wednesday, the 22nd. Um, if we're able to get the zoning change, that will allow us to operate all under one roof, which is obviously our preference over having our manufacturing, essentially our, our machine shop, uh, in a different facility. Uh, architectural design is underway. We'll be submitting the building request application for the first stage uh, later this week or early next week. Uh, that first stage will be signage and a facade facelift, in other words, a paint job, uh, later this week or early next week, as I said. Uh, we're moving forward with our plan independent of the zoning decision. Um, in closing, we're seeking to be a good corporate citizen with the city of West Dallas, and we hope to find a mutually beneficial relationship moving forward. So I look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks. Thanks very much. Is there anybody else that wishes to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Okay. Seeing none, we will close citizen participation. We will go on to item F. Our standing committees will be meeting during recess. Those room numbers are listed at the top of page two on your agendas. Moving to item G, mayor's report. I just have one quick thing this evening. I just want to take a minute to congratulate all the graduates from um, not only the two, three high schools in West Dallas, but also in the area. I know this weekend was the drive through graduation ceremony for West Dallas Central and West Dallas Hale. And I realized that this was not the graduation that a lot of those families envisioned, but I want to thank the school district for taking steps to try to give them some element of a ceremony. And um, the circumstances should really not take away from the amazing accomplishment that they all um, experienced. So I wanna wish them all the best in the future. That does conclude the mayor's report. Do we have any reports from the alder persons? Mayor Devine. Alderman Stefanski. I just want to thank everybody who um, helped make the 4th of July parade possible and uh, all the participants who were in it and uh, all those that came out to see it. Everybody seemed to have a good time. So thank you. Thank you. Any other older persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of the Common Council meetings of June 16th and June 25th, 2020. Second. There's a motion with a second by Alderman Vitale. Were there any adjustments to the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. I will ask for a motion to uh, place item, items four and five on file and refer items six through 11 to the city attorney. So moved. Second. Motion by 